Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Morbid early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Hey, weirdos, I'm Elena. I'm Sheena. And I'm Ashley. <laughs> no, you're not. That's my government name. Don't use it, bloody. Use I will come it. to your house and strangle you in your sleep because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Did I do that right? That's obviously Ash. That's obviously yeah, not. Ash is with us. <laughs> no, it is not Ash. As you guys can tell, we have Sheena Melwani and Trid in the house today. Yay! Last time Yay! we were here, you had a button that clapped. This time I'll clap for myself. We did. We still have a button, but I never know which button it is. That's okay. So I could hit something, but it Let's might be do like it. a Let's fart see what happens. Yeah. Let's not really try. Sure. Let's try. Let's hit a button. I don't think it did We're not anything. wearing you know headphones, what? so Woo! you tell us what happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think anything happened. It's just going to be like dead air. I'll insert something insert really great. Insert funny Perfect. sound yeah. here. Like, burr, 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 or something. Oh, yes. Vuvuzilas. Yeah. I like those. There you go. I've, oh, I forgot what those were called. Vuvuz, what is it? I, that's what I called them. Vuvuzilas? They're like vu. Vuvuzilas. There's something like that. Is that a th- you just yeah. made bah, 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 that up. No, it's that actually noise. pretty close to that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know, though. Maybe this is just confirmation bias. And I'm like, yeah, totally. That's what what he I said. think that's what it is. It what, it's like is. a what he said thing. Yeah, he says it. He, I'm like, that sounds right. I like that. He does that with a lot of confidence. And then you believe him. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. But he's got the confidence. entire internet fooled. Absolutely. <laughs> and I immediately was one of those people. As soon as I came across your video on TikTok, I was like, I believe everything you say. Him. Yeah. Him. Not me. No, I never. Nobody believe believes me, but said. I'm actually the one who speaks all the <laughs> truths. But no one believes but me. But no one, everyone's like, it's him. Yeah, those are Vuvuzila. <laughs> he actually Vuvuzila. stopped. He went to search for Vuvuzila. It was. <laughs> that sound was brought to you by Google. There you go. That's not a. Bah, 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 bah. That's I know different. that's the wrong instrument. See? That is different because those are more. But like But he just... said it with confidence, so you believed him. I did, and I still kind of do. You <laughs> should. <Weirdly> enough. <laughs> I haven't even forgotten yet. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, you guys. I, I'm sure you guys know who Sheena Malwani and Trit is, and if you don't. Go on TikTok. Yeah, come find us. And go find Sheena. And you will also find Trid. And you will laugh your ass off. And you will end up sending these videos between either your friends or your husband or wife a hundred thousand times a night. Or People your kids. send it to their kids and their Entire grandparents. Entire families. And, yep, yep. Because that's what happened with John and I. We were literally for like an entire year sending your videos Aww. back and forth between ourselves. <laughs> and now they don't do it anymore and because they're like, sane no. people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you can like, find we know me. This, we know them. It's fine. We're over it. We still send the videos. Oh. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you could find me on Spotify. There you go. No, you can find me on Spotify. <laughs> well, someone had to say it. Because <laughs> Sheena is multi-talented. Uh, not only hilarious and a beautiful Luna Moth. Uh, <laughs> but I still don't get that, but I love it. I've decided to call Sheena a beautiful Luna Moth because it Luna really Moths is, are beautiful. It really is a very interesting yeah. looking creature. They're unique. Yes. They're they're pretty. They're I'll take delicate. It. I feel like they sparkle without actually sparkling. Which is like you. Elena. Like you're not fully made out of glitter, but I feel like you are glittery. <laughs> Should I just I come back to- and pick her up <laughs> in, <laughs> in an hour? You also are Ash, fully where glittery. are you? <laughs> oh, that's my skincare routine. Yeah, but you're like actually fully glittery. Yes. Because he's I have, he's right glowing now, today. Because I have an emoji. He's an actual I disco always ball look. right now. Like, <laughs> it's an emoji disco ball. You Why guys just are you glowing today? What you is truly happening? Are. It's my aura. It's your aura. Yes, you I'm a special person. Yes. You have that pregnancy I am. Yeah. I actually um, rubbed a pregnant woman's tummy this morning. That'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it. It's if contagious. she doesn't punch you in the face. It was, uh, it. she was ask- asking for that. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Consent. Why do people do that? I never liked when people no, did that. No, me neither. They just come up. And they touch your stomach and they're like, oh, can I touch you? You're already you're like, touching me. You're already here. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know what to do here. When I was pregnant with the twins, I was so gigantic that everyone felt like they really had like license to do that. With both hands. Yeah. Oh, and license to be like, oh, are you like ready to pop? And I was like, no, I'm only five months pregnant. Thank you for asking them. <sighs> oh, that's I kind. Explode. You should yeah. rub people's heads. Yeah. Pregnant women out there, you are allowed to rub the person rubbing you right back. Like there bald heads? If they're bald, 
double points, but Hair you holes. just rub their head. <laughs> Whatever's it's up there, anything. Just you rub just rub. It. <laughs> like, oh, you rub me, I rub you. You and rub they me, say, I why rub you? Why are you shaking my? Why are you rubbing my head? Why are you rubbing my stomach? Yeah, it's a valid the, question. The best thing would be like, why are you rubbing my stomach? I'm not pregnant. Yeah. That oh that is yeah the just ultimate. make them super uncomfortable. Ruin like, their what are you whole doing? Life. Because that will be something they think about in their final hour. They will be like, remember that time? Remember that, that very I very that woman's stomach, East lady, <laughs> like, it will, who was stealing basketballs yeah. at Dick's and I rubbed her stomach. And I rubbed her stomach, and she told me she wasn't pregnant. Like that'll and stay then she with rubbed them my head. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ultimate. That's the way to ruin someone. That really is. That's why I come on this show. That is. We get to talk about how to rub people the wrong way. <laughs> just life ruining moments. <laughs> yes. Brought excellent. to you by Trips. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we should talk about a little bit? Um, Disney. Oh, your favorite you place. We're going to Disney. Is well, I heard your, your raving place? review. I, I booked immediately. The most magical place on earth as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I actually wanted to ask you if you wanted to come with us. Yeah. You know what? I do. I need to do a redo because that was not a not a great experience, I think. I heard you did more laundry in Disney than you have in your own sure house did. in a month. Yeah. <laughs> At one point we broke the the dryer. Come on. But not yeah. in a good way. In the middle of the in the middle of the night. Whenever is it a good way that you would break a dryer? Please <laughs> when explain. When it's not filled me. with vomit. Yeah. That is better than anything. anything is better than how <laughs> that, they broke it. That's definitely not I'm going to keep it break clean it. on this show because yeah. I know they yeah, this is a G-rated show. She you know, please it is. We behave don't swear. yourself. We don't, nothing. We don't talk. They about only talk about things. Disneyland. That's all. That's what this podcast is. It's, it's just a, a Disney, Disney podcast. podcast. They're your official sponsor. I yeah, think. official sponsor yeah. Disney. <laughs> I'm wearing ears right now. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> if Ash was here, she it would be. It would be half five. true. She would. She had. She. I love her because she was just like she. Fully committed to I the love Disney that. experience. That's how I expect yeah. to go. I that's want how to I commit. Expected. But I also have that, like, I really appreciated what you were saying about, like, just seeing Disney through your kids' eyes. Yes. And I think that's that a whole different thing. It is. Mm. It really, when you go as a parent, you kind of put all your own stuff aside. Yep. And you just go and you love it. Yeah. Because you see the world through your children's eyes. Oh, yeah. And even when you're like, sweating and there's a million people slamming into you and it smells weird and you're like why am i here i hate that everything's pastel and it i'm like oh amazing. god i don't know what you're just, <laughs> was like it's bearing down on me and then like we went into the little bippity boppity boutique and the girls were just like blown away that they got to go into cinderella's castle to get their hair done i was like all right this is all right yeah. like immediately i was like this is great you know what makes me happy that all of those moments they enjoy being princesses comes from John. Yes. <laughs> that makes me happy. Because it's certainly because not coming it's, from you. It's me. not coming from you. <laughs> like your <Yeah>. black nails. <laughs> <and> your... <laughs> like, I don't know where. And John, John loves it too. Of he course. was like fully invested in Where all is of it. that guy? He's my hero. I thought he was going to be here. I know. You he's tricked not me. Here. Ash's not here. All the Disney people have evacuated the building. Yeah, they left Morticia in their place <laughs> to talk about Disney. We love it. Here I'm, he I'm it. here to add a little little spice. That's love all. It. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna redo Disney. We're gonna do it right. John John is like absolutely determined to do Disney. Like again. where you like it. Yeah, he was Just like, we're gonna up, make this go like, in a good October. Experience. Yeah, there you go. They'll, they'll, they'll be do some... like a spooky Disney for yeah. sure. I did do the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and there's a big drop, and I was proud of myself for doing <laughs> you it. Survived the drop. I did. All, so did my three year old. So <laughs> I was gonna say like, all four seconds we, of it. It was like it was a good drop. At the end of it, I was like, because Drew told us, you know, he was he's been there like a million times. So Drew was our like unofficial tour guide, and would tell us if certain rides were okay for the kids, or uh -huh. if you know this one has a drop. I don't know if you'll like it. And that one, he was like, there is a drop, but it's really small. And, and you can we handle the it. drop. I looked back at him and I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, that was a big drop. <laughs> he was like, it really wasn't. That so really she, wasn't. In the official Disney photo, she's looking back. I'm both, just looking at you. Yeah, the, the, the kids are all smiling. <laughs> Everyone else is like, yay. In their, I'm like, son of a bitch. In their booster seats. <laughs> yeah. Would they admit on said ride? They thought it was great. <laughs> Amazing. So we will go and recreate all these pastel memories yeah. in two in weeks. Two weeks. Pastel <clears> wonder. <throat> I love it. It's just parenting in a different space. In in like a magical land. Yeah. With bracelets. With no sleep. With lots of with no. bracelets that trans <laughs> and lots of translate junk. to money. 
I know, heard there were giraffes that like there roam. They 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 just like come right up. Is that where they you like stay? serve yeah. coffee in the morning? Those giraffes. Yeah, they do. No? They're like, do you yeah. need anything? And you're like, no, giraffe. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> like, no, they, Mr. Giraffe. Thanks um, for just being here. More sheets, it. please. <laughs> please, <laughs> definitely more sheets in this one. <laughs> we'll take all the sheets, preferably dark. Oh yeah. Oh, they're all white sheets. <laughs> Let me tell you, all of them are white, but not after my family was there. You know Feel what bad. you would have enjoyed? If you would have found a tunnel that took you to the Disney underworld. Yes. To show you how all this Any happens. underworld would have been You would have enjoyed it. You'd have seen like stains on the wall and people yeah. running, screaming. Yeah. Hey, where the hell is that Cinderella? <laughs> She's due in this castle in four minutes and then you see you some guys, high school listen, girl running putting on a slipper no you you'd have, have tripped to them laughed up at them where they walk up where they run up where they stay all day in the sun wandering free wish i could be part of that world just embrace it where did that Ariel come from what just, just happened? came in here real quick <laughs> What just and then happened? somehow swam out with no water. I don't even I know how that just happened. happened. That was a real special it's a treat. Disney that trick. Was I, you know, I wanted to be a Disney princess. When you I was should younger. be a Disney yeah, but princess. not not Jasmine. Not no, Jasmine. Why the would redheaded I be Ariel. Why would I be Jasmine? Why be Jasmine when you can be Ariel? <laughs> why? <laughs> I want to be a ginger. I feel that. Who doesn't want to be a ginger? Not I'm saying. Me. I'm just saying. <laughs> I promised people it was going to get weird in here. It's going to get weird. All right, let's do it. I'm okay, saying. now that you've got her all bubbly with her Disney songs, tell her what we're going to be talking me out. about. So now, <laughs> so this, the shit out of you me. know this she's afraid, right? You know and... she will not watch yeah. a horror movie. Oh, she will not watch yeah. anything. I won't but even she comes watch here. like I love it. You know what's that? The, the they made like a joke, like a sm a spook off of like Scream. Oh, yeah. Scary movie. Yeah, I won't yeah. even watch that. And those are hilarious. I know, yeah. but I won't watch it. <laughs> All right. Tell us a story. All right. So listener tale time. And this one is a um, themed episode. And Deb Deb has found haunted hospitals. Oh. Why? Because... Because hospitals are just fun they're places just not, otherwise. They're not sad enough and scary That's enough. That's what it is. It's all the sadness. <gasps> Where do you think deaths. ghosts go to heal? To heal. They need hospitals too. Yeah, there you go. Oh my God. It's true. Hospitals are spooky. Take it from someone who worked in a morgue in a hospital overnight many times. It's a creepy place. Why is that not surprising to me? Yeah. <laughs> a morgue. And you know what's funny too? All the nurses would come down when they would have to come down. They hated coming down to the morgue. And they would come down in the middle of the night and every single time they'd always go, are you just alone down here? And I was like, yeah. And they'd be like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, I couldn't do that. And they just leave. Like, they were just like, you're horrifying. I have to go. Like, all that of them were just like. That does sound horrifying. Every time. Is are you anyone listening surprised? Like, yeah, except for all these people. <laughs> do you know what the morgue is like? This. For me, the morgue is like underneath Disney. Yeah. It's essentially that. And then you're happy about it. Yeah, it was great. It was very oh quiet God. and peaceful in there. Yeah. You know, you just talk to people. They're dead. Yeah, they can't yeah. talk back to you. It's oh, great. Yeah. Like, Only once in a while they talk back. My favorite kind of interaction is just like, <laughs> I can just sit there and talk and no no small talk. We're good. Pass. It's great. Pass. Especially in the middle of the night. <laughs> Pass. Hard Peaceful. pass. The only problem with the morgue in the middle of the night is if you do get a weird like visual in your head. Like we had one that was like a pretty gnarly one. And so it kind of like shook me for a second when they came in and I was sitting in the office and I just kept thinking about what if they just stood up and walked in here? And then I kept getting this weird vision of them just standing up and walking in in a body bag into the oh office. Oh my God. That wasn't great. That would be exactly yeah. what I'd need to run for the hills. Yeah, that was not great. Never come back. So I just kept having to go in there and peek. And be like, like, oh, he hasn't moved. Right? Still, yeah, like, no, still, still dead. Still dead. Yeah. Is that why they put locks on those freezers? Yeah. In case probably. they try to get up and come <laughs> so out? they can't come out. Yeah. Because sometimes, this is little known, but sometimes they're like, mm, just lock them in there. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to. We're not sure. Because they get up sometimes. But let's just throw them in can, there. Yeah. Can we move on? They yeah, like sometimes, freaking, like yeah. zombies are real. <laughs> we'll go on to haunted hospitals. The, Take that's a how you put them in the term. freezer. I'm never yeah. going down to a morgue, ever. It's a, it's a place. Yeah. It's got a vibe. It's got a smell. They should put it right on the top floor. It has a smell too. Yeah. And it's not like a dead body smell, but it's like got a very like chemical smell. Like mothball smell. Yeah. There's a lot of like different preservatives, you know, preservatives going yeah. on. Yeah. The Walk same into things an that they put. Sweet and you yeah. will get a different kind of smell. 
That's for sure. But if you're in there, you should have your face covered. So. I wish you guys could see my face. Yeah. <laughs> She's smiling. She's, she's like, I just want to no. see that. <laughs> she's just she's eating hummus sandwich. Yeah. It's fine. All right. So my first one I'll do is called Pediatric Nurse Gets More Than She Bargained For. Ooh. I don't love ghost kids. So this is going to be uh, challenging. But this For one you. says, yeah, I don't love a ghost kid. Okay. Why? Because one, like it's they're sad. always giggling. Oh my which God. Is weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. Or like doing some, or singing. I don't love like a singing child ghost. That's not really my cup you of tea. You should be an equal, equal opportunity ghost lover. I am. Like, I'm not going to turn you away. Yeah. But like, you're not going to be my favorite. You're not going to be employee of the month over here right, as a child right. ghost. The but singing is always like creepy and it's out of always, tune. And yeah. That's what it is. It's always out of tune. And it's it out of that. tune. That's the issue. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it's it. It's very stressful. It's very unprofessional if is the, what it is, which stresses if the, me out. If the dead so kid immature. could just sing so properly, immature. it'd be fine. And also if it's a, a kid ghost, you're like, you died. I know. It's like so that's a kid sad. that died. Yeah. So yeah. So pediatric nurse gets more than she bargained for. And back to dead kids. It says, hey, Elena, Ash, and Deb Deb. My name is... Heather, yes, you can use my name if by some miracle this makes it onto the pod. Miracles happen. Hi, Heather. Yes. It's on the pod. But not for the children we're about to discuss. Apparently not. And I would like to start off by saying thank you for taking the time out of your day to read this submission, even though I am sure you have a billion and seven others to read. You're amazing. You really are. And you stood out, Heather. I can say your name. Yep, I can. So you guys are absolutely amazing, and I don't think I would survive my hour-long drive to work every day without this podcast. You guys are pure entertainment, and I wish I could be your guys' BFF because you're dope as shit. We are BFFs, and you are also dope as yes. shit, Heather. Yes. And Ash would agree. Absolutely. If she was here, she would say you are dope as fuck. I agree I on her say, behalf. I have I her proxy that, today. But, but you feel yeah, it. Yeah, I feel it in yeah. my soul. And you exude it. Yes. I feel that. Dope. You guys have made me cry with laughter so many times, all while talking about murder. And that takes some real talent. Anyway, I'm going it to... Really, it really is a does. skill. You know, you got to make fun of the murderer. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, I'm going to get into my supernatural experience before my ADHD takes over. And I end up gushing over you guys for 20 pages. Mm -hmm. I love you, Heather. So I am currently a pediatric nurse, which means you're a superhero. Yes. So yes. Agreed. Thanks for being that. Clap for you. Love a pediatric nurse. Love them. They saved one of my twins' lives, so I always love a pediatric nurse. They really are the true heroes. Amazing. Like, I um, mean, literal superheroes. The doctors, I mean, they're awesome also. They come in, also they leave, but the pediatric but nurses are the ones that are there through the night holding the hair back. Exactly. They're always but, bringing the extra toys in and the extra little things yeah. that you need. <laughs> so for some background information on how my final semester went, most of my days were spent at a hospital assigned to a, to a nurse that already worked there and learning from her how to be the best nurse I can be. Shout out to you, Alyssa, for making my final semester the best semester ever. Thanks, Alyssa. Shout out to Alyssa. Alyssa, you rock. You are the MVP. P.S. I asked, and you can say her name too. Good, because I oh. said it before looking at <laughs> that. So I would have had to bleep that out. I mean, so her sorry, name is Alyssa. Ma. Hell yeah, Alyssa. <laughs> Originally, I asked my school if I could be assigned to a neonatal intensive care unit. You really are oh, a yeah. hero. Who are you? Seriously. You're amazing. At one of the hospitals in my city because I already had a job lined up there for after I graduated. Unfortunately, due to COVID, that unit wasn't taking students and my 3.4 GPA wasn't good enough to go to the children's hospital in the city. This meant I got stuck at a hospital I had never been to and had to work on a floor that only saw adults. That sucks. I'm going to try to continue this story with giving as much detail as I can without violating HIPAA. I appreciate that. that. Yeah, I know. That's a good thing. I do appreciate good rule. that. At one point towards the end of my semester, I was doing well enough that the nurse who oversaw me would let me go into patients' rooms alone to do certain things. My first patient was in his mid-30s and was completely with it mentally. While I was getting his vitals, I tried to make, a, make small talk. One of the first questions I asked was, how did you sleep last night? The man proceeded to tell me that he slept fine, except for around midnight when a group of children went running through the halls oh and peeking boy. into every room once in a while. And so it begins. He then said that once the quote unquote older nurse got the children to behave, he was able to go to sleep. I immediately froze when he told me this for two reasons. <laughs> oh, One, can I guess? Can I guess? So what are the reasons? <laughs> there are no children in that hospital. One. Yep. Two. 
There's no older nurse. Ding, ding, ding. One I at should, this time. I should be writing <laughs> yeah. these stories. You're like, I knew it. <laughs> at this time, COVID rates were still high, so children were not allowed in oh the hospital. Oh, my God. And two, all the nurses from the night before were under 40 years old. So I'm there melting. was no older nurse working there I'm that melting. night. melting. <laughs> yep. I can't. Literally melting. I can't. I told the man all of this, and he looked at me completely confused. He then went on to tell me that there were definitely kids running in the halls the previous night, and that the, quote, girl with the blue sweater was the one who was going in and out of the room the most. The one oh with the gosh. long hair. He, the but long, long braggly hair. to comb that brat's hair. Yep, and she had a British accent, <laughs> and she was the ghost of Christmas oh past. Oh my god! I continued to just, just stare at the man like the awkward turtle I am, and said, okay cool before leaving to go find my nurse she's just like rad all right no thumbs up for you awesome man. sorry about that won't happen yeah, again we, can't guarantee double, that won't happen tonight did we double his medication yeah, last night let's make him sleep i immediately told her what the man said to me and she then proceeded to say oh yeah patients here see kids running down the halls all the time at night what and then she said this makes sense considering this was a pediatric floor when the hospital first opened Oh, yes. so they're just a bunch of dead kids. Oh. Yes. Even though this wasn't a saying at the time, I definitely shit my dick at this moment. Oh my God. <laughs> That's an unfortunate <laughs> event Heather, for her to you. experience. She's like, wasn't a saying back then, but I felt it in my bones. <laughs> Is it a saying now? Heather just made it up. It is. It's a, I heard it on TikTok. Oh, you did? Oh, really? There's a TikTok sound that says, are you shitting my dick? <laughs> And it's what Ash's side of favorite. TikTok are you on? I'm, on? I'm not on that side. It's an Ash side of TikTok because <laughs> Ash is the one that brings me these and is like, this is the funniest shit oh I've ever seen. God. She has the most random TikTok algorithm. <laughs> her feed. I'd be curious to spend a day on her, her feed. feed. is a wild place to be. I love it. Just like I love her it so mind. much. Yeah. yeah. Just, mine's like a very spooky, it has spooky stuff, but it also has like lots of like parent humor on yeah, mm-hmm. random sheena Lots video pops puppies. up and one random sheena and trid video and then, every yeah, once and in a you, while you fly in there all the time yeah just spooky parent puppies that's Ash basically is my more theme. like hers is hers is like her like her her music algorithm would be insane too she listens to literally everything under the sun right. and that is who she is right there's just no rhyme or reason. She's Amazing. Gemini. I love it. You know, she's yeah. everywhere. She's multiple people. That's why we just love floating her. Around in All there. those souls. Yeah. Who are we getting Inside today? Of her, you know, I love it. All right. Not knowing what else to do or say, I moved on to my next patient. This was an older woman who had been there for a while, and I've had many conversations with, mostly about her adorable cat and dog, because I could talk for hours about someone's pets with them. Same. Mm. She greeted me with a good morning, darling, to which I responded with a good morning, and asked her to FaceTime with her cat and dog with the when, how her FaceTime went with her cat and dog the previous night. Oh, she didn't ask the I, nurse yeah, she to was FaceTime. Like, how, did it, how did it go last night, nice. hanging yeah. out on FaceTime with your cat and dog? I love that she did that. <laughs> love it. Um, where am I? She said it went fine, but that the children running in the hall got too distracting at one point. Oh boy, with the children again. Once again, I shit my dick. (laughs) There she goes. I then proceeded to ask her if she remembered what the children looked like, to which she responded that the one child who kept going in and out of the room was a little girl wearing a cardigan, (gasps) the same color as my scrub pants. My scrub pants were blue. Oh. Well, they were before she They were. <laughs> before she them. shit her dick. <laughs> yes. I honestly can't tell you how the rest of my day went because I was too paranoid looking over my shoulder worrying that ghost children were following me in and out of rooms. Also, from then on, anytime I worked a night shift, I would try to tell the ghost children to behave and not keep the patients up that night. That's nice of you. That you're is just very like, nice of Heather. Just okay, out, behave okay? yourselves. But she kept working there. She kept working there. Of course. What's she going to do? She's a hero. She really quit? is. Yeah. Um, I would not last more than, not even one day, but one minute after that. I would love it. I would have left. I'd just be like, guys, I'm okay, here. Come on. I Let's would have found out. my replacement because I'm responsible. You could have sang to yeah. them. To the ghost children? Yeah. I'm sorry. Why not? That's, You'd get that's to a tender your pass. resignation to them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, sorry, I have sorry, to resign. Sorry, kids. Yes. Gotta um, go. Peace. Yes. Gotta go. Yep. You freak me out. Yep. It says, I probably looked like a freaking weirdo talking to nothing, but like you guys always say, it's good to keep things weird, but not so weird that ghost children go in and out of people's hotel rooms, keeping them up at night, because to be honest, that's a little rude. That is a little rude. <laughs> and that Let is them Heather. sleep. Let them sleep. The fact that two patients said the exact same back thing. Back to back. Yeah. It's like, that's not just one guy being like, yeah, I had weird 
visual and auditory hallucinations yes. last night. Scary as <laughs> maybe shit. Maybe I'm on weird meds. Yeah. No, that is terrifying. And Unless the weird that. meds were being served to everybody in that ward that night. Yeah. And there they all go. had the same symptoms? Yes. They were yes. messing with her. That's how. That's what I would do if I was like... Oh, you think it's like a hazing thing? I for thing? sure oh, would do that. Go. If I were in a hospital, I'd just call my friend Bertha next door because all old ladies with dogs and cats that they FaceTime are called Bertha. And I'd say, <laughs> hey, Bertha, blue cardigan today. Got it? <laughs> say She'd it, say, Bertha. Okay, do it, do it. Okay, do good. It, Bertha. The new girl's coming. <laughs> Let's go with the blue I, cardigan I noise. That's a hazing. That would be a really good hazing to weed out the weak. Yeah. You just know, have all these, like you're like you, you're you not going to handle ghosts, this. If you you're can't listening handle the yeah. ghosts, to this, you're out. like if, you probably like there's going to be a lot worse on here. So like if you can't handle the ghost children, like this probably is they would have scared for you. Me off. Yeah, if you are like, listening, you know I, I I see what I need to see, yeah. and I yep. can leave. I'm all done here. Yeah, I'm good. So if you're listening to this from a hospital ward, talk to all your roommates. <laughs> And come and up with see. a story to scare the crap out of the oh night nurse. There you go. Yes. You guys Weed it out. Worst. Get the best of the best. Survival of the fittest. This is so good. I'm going to do that. It's got to be. I'm Visit gonna a hospital. The problem tell, is listen, he's going to do it. Start the finish. story. Start the story. Tell everybody that children Just were running it. the halls oh at God. night. And see I what happens that. when the interns come tomorrow. There you go. You're cut out to be a pediatric <laughs> nurse if you can put <laughs> up, with, up with that. Ghost children or alive children. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Heather. You're the best. Jill Evans has it all. A big house, fast car, and a great career as a decorated police sergeant in Wales. But when it comes to love, she can just never seem to get things right. And after multiple failed engagements, Jill is starting to think it's just never going to happen for her. That is, until she connects online with a charming, handsome, and successful man named Dean Jenkins. From the outside, there may be some red flags, but Jill doesn't care. He's the one. And just six months in, Jill finds out she's pregnant, and they make plans to spend the rest of their lives together. But the night after Halloween, Jill receives a shocking text that will change everything. And what she reads threatens to take away her dreams of happiness, her career, and maybe even her freedom. Wondery and Novel's new podcast, Stolen Hearts, tells the intricate love story of Jill and Dean, and how opposites really do attract. Follow Stolen Hearts on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Prime members, you can binge the entire series ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Decades before Anna Delvey began scamming her way into high society, Christian Carl Gerhardt's writer was infiltrating America's most elite circles with little more than a fake name and a lot of charm. Bold, ruthless, and willing to kill, Gerhardt's writer embarked on a caper across the West Coast, successfully evading the FBI for decades. Hi, I'm Sachi Cole, co-host of Wondery's podcast, Scamfluencers, where we unpack the lives and schemes of some of the biggest scammers and con artists. In our recent two-part series, Three Weddings and a Funeral, high society's top social circles become a playground for a fraudster. Follow Scamfluencers wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. So this next one that Sheena is going to read is called Featuring Hospital and a Spirit of a Deceased Friend. Love, Jim. More hospitals? The hospitals. whole theme. This is all going to be a theme. <sighs> all right. Haunted hospitals. Good day, my morbid mates. Ooh, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm terrible with accents. Just my, well, How did you decide to go with that? That's how I we like wrote it. it. Good day, my morbid mates. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. If you can't tell, I'm Australian. Oh, hell Yeah. I can, but I just can't do the accent. We love an Australian. But this Australian fan is a huge fan. Contrary to popular belief, we don't always say good day, mate. It's more like an old school white dad who dances really <laughs> awkwardly at a barbecue kind of thing to say. <laughs> that makes sense. That does make sense. <laughs> like my dad says, good day, mate. <laughs> He's going like to be it. saying good day, mate, for the rest of the day. Today. Yes. <laughs> and dancing That's awkwardly. That's how I say yes. If Ash, if Ash was here, she would use her Australian accent in the one word that she knows how to do it. She always says, nor. <laughs> when she wants oh to yes, know. yes. <laughs> no. No. And she'll Are say, you gonna no, give us a good day, uh, No. No. <laughs> yep. Well, have I got a weird story for you? Here we go. I love it. You see, R. What was nor. that? <laughs> say R and R. R and R. Now you R just said, nar. oh no, like an Australian. Oh. <laughs> 
R and R. R and R. There you oh go. My God. It works. It works. R and R. There my, you go. That's, that's my, my gift go-to. to you today. Oh, You're thank so you for welcome. bestowing that upon R&R. me. R and R. You know what I learned? I did like an Australian accent let's, on some of our Australian episodes. Let's give it a minute episodes. for everyone. We'll give you 10 seconds now in your cars, in your homes, wherever you are, everyone. On three, one, two, three. Oh, R and no. R. You got it. You're all experts You got now. it. We're all linguistically. Morbid's gift to you today is how to show sympathy if you're in Australia. Yeah. You know what? R&R. I looked up all the like the different ways to say things like with the Australian accent because when we did like Australian madness, I think we did an episode that was just like crazy Australian stuff and I got good at it, but I lost it. How? I have to get good at it practice. again. It was years ago. I just keep didn't do it again. We have to practice. I probably got self-conscious about mm-hmm. it. I'm but, super self-conscious. Mm, I'll have to get back on it. Okay. I want to get that in a, in a Scottish accent. I want to do really good. Because I can only say, don't get, and that's that's all I got. That's an ass. Yeah. That's an ass. <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Just here to confirm don't that care. is an ass. Don't get. Yeah, go on. All right. <laughs> Let's continue. Anyway. You see, I spent a lot of time in a hospital as a child. I was born with cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic lung and digestive system condition. Mm. It sucks, yet I am pretty healthy these days and have had a very successful lung transplant nine years. Whoa. I know. And when I was nine years ago, when I was 23 and the liver transplant 18 years ago, when I was 14 years old, now I'm 32 and doing well. This is amazing. You know, you don't realize that we're like Legos. Yeah. Like with medicine, just swap out this piece. Yeah. Take this on and put this one in. And just put it back in. And like he's fine. Tri- like, that's wild. That is. Liver Go and lung. sign all your, what is it, your license? Yeah. If you're dead, why do you need to keep the parts? I Let agree. a guy like this oh, get yeah, the part so he can keep Same. living. Got my little heart on my license. Absolutely. Yeah, send yeah. all the hate my take way it. for people who want to take their organs, but I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> take it. I'm literally going to be. Need it you, no. What did you do with it when you yeah, were in the basement me, in the hospital? You don't need it. Give it to somebody. Someone else can use it. Yeah. Yeah. At least that way they won't come after you. Exactly. Listen to my friend Lego Man. There Sign you your organ donor card. Yes. Do it. In 2007. Okay. So this was when she was in the hospital in 2007 when she was 17. Okay. I got to know a lot of my nurses at the kids hospital over the years pretty well. Some would let me hang out behind the desk on night shift if I couldn't sleep because hospital beds suck. Yeah, they do. They truly do. So one night I was hanging out with the nurses. It had been a pretty sad day on the ward. Unfortunately, I experienced a friend passing away while I was in the hospital. Oh, that's really sad. That is sad. It would rarely happen, yet my friend had passed away in the ICU that morning. After she was transferred there from the ward, um, she also had, oh, she also had cystic fibrosis. Let's call her Kate for the story to protect her identity. Kate was waiting for a double lung and liver transplant. We were good friends and she was just too sick and didn't make it in time for her transplant to come. Oh, that's so sad. That is really sad. See, organ donors. Yep. I encourage everyone listening to sign up. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we did it already. The <laughs> website or foundation for organ donation. There you and go. No, it's not like the black market organ donation, which is illegal and unethical. Thanks exactly. for that. That's some education for another time though. <laughs> Kate was strong, funny, never afraid of anything and would teach me things I never knew about anything and everything. She was wise beyond her years, and I honestly believe she was here to teach people. She passed at the age of 15 and around two weeks before her 16th birthday. Oh, Gemma. That's really sad. I'm so sorry. Kate sounds rad. I knew Kate. I know. When she was put into the ICU after being stabilized in surgery and not back on the ward. Oh, before her 16th birthday. All her things were left in her room on the ward, and she had already been in the hospital for weeks. She was not too sick to go home, and she was too sick to go home. Until the transplant came, unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be, and a donor could not be matched in time. I hate that. That's really sad. So there I was, hanging out with the nurses behind the desk one night, late around 3 a.m. They let cystic fibrosis patients hang out behind the desk occasionally if we couldn't sleep, et cetera, back in 2007. These days, there were not a lot of, these days, there were not a lot of rules with CF patients and cross-infection. Unlike in the movie Five Feet Apart, there is some truth to that movie, yet I can't stand that movie though. I mean, who the hell goes ice skating on a lake in the middle of the night when waiting for a lung transplant? I can barely shower myself (laughs) or walk three meters, let alone do that. That would be really frustrating to watch while you're going through it. And you're like, yeah, no, that doesn't work. (laughs) Thank you for that. Right. Beautiful. 
Back to my story. My nurse and I were chatting away about random things, surfing the web, looking up silly sites like funnyjunk.com. Who remembers that? <laughs> funnyjunk.com? Funnyjunk.com? I'm not even sure if it's still a website. It was like a website of funny photos before memes were a huge thing. I love that. Me too. We should go look it up after yeah. this. Funnyjunk.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look it up as you're doing it. <laughs> Maybe it's just Oh, look, here's a fridge. <laughs> The aircon in the hospital was getting maintenance work done. I promise this is important later. So the aircon wasn't working for a few hours that night. All of a sudden, from Kate's empty room, as she had been transferred to the ICU, slowly bopping out was a balloon. It was a get well foil balloon with the ribbon still attached to it, which we both knew was tied at the other end to her bed. Her room was right near the nurse's station as she was a more, one of the more critical patients and needed a lot of care. My nurse and I were talking and mid-sentence looked at the balloon, then looked at each other, then looked back at the balloon. We looked at each other again and just whispered, what the... What? <laughs> what the actual F? There was no draft, no air to push this balloon bopping along the hallway at us. Remember how I said there was no air con that night and it was tied down at the end of her bed? The balloon had pink and red colors. If it was only red in color, I probably would have yeeted myself into an early discharge home, <laughs> thinking <laughs> it, the clown, was now on yeah, the Yeah, I was going to say Pennywise is coming through. Yeah. So as I have been in and out of the hospital with my CF most of my childhood over the years, I found out where the morgue was. It was down the large hallway and into the diagnostic services part of the hospital. Now, this hallway just happened to be near the teenager's ward. Oh, this story is getting a little bit scary. Getting a little I'm, scary. I know. Yes. My nurses and I stood up. By now, it had bopped right up close to the desk, hovering. Super creepy. We were both gobsmacked. That's a good word. That is a good word. All of a sudden, it turned towards the ward main doors and floats out. As there were two other nurses in the drug room, my nurse quickly told them, um, we'll be back in one second. We both decided to follow this balloon Ooh, that had us gobsmacked back and to her. freaked I like the F that. out. Now it was out of the ward and, yep, still bopping down that hallway. Oh, that's spooky. And they were actually following, said oh, balloon. Oh, yes. Yeah. She wants back in. I would follow the hell out of the balloon. You would too? Yeah, I need yeah. to know where it's going. Okay. My nurse and I were half laughing and I said, why do I feel so cold? Ooh. We both had goosebumps now. Remember the aircon wasn't working. The balloon had reached the next hallway away from the hall to the ward, towards the hallway, past the elevators, to the diagnostic section of the hospital. Which is ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> no aircon. Hey. Nothing could have been making this thing move the way that it did. Yep, it was still floating, and this time at more of a speed. And we were both so cold. There's a ghost afoot. Katie? There is a ghost afoot. Kate? Let me tell you. I know. It is cold. I'm sorry to tell you. Ghost makes you cold. <laughs> You okay, my nurse asked. Yeah, fine. I just, I was kind of stunned and pointed to the balloon. We watched the balloon. It went down the hallway and we both gasped. It turned a new corner straight to the hallways that led to the diagnostic services where the mortuary was. We both screamed as we had the same thought. Kate, she wants her balloon. Oh my God. You're surprised? Like it's Come just, a, it, it, I, I knew I'm it was sorry. following, but I wasn't thinking of her wanting her balloon. Well, I thought she was just, I thought she was just like the leading them that like, way. But now I'm like, oh my God, she, she wants, wants her the balloon. balloon back. Maybe it was her and she was just she was walking 15, with her Because she was going to be turning 16. It's like her birthday. So she's like, I want my balloon. We suddenly realized what had happened and ran back to the ward laughing. What? Yeah. We saw something really bizarre. I yeah. couldn't Wait, sleep they didn't that complete night. the journey? They did not complete the journey. They just laughed. Why didn't they take the balloon back? to Katie? Because they think they were Katie been of came service. in and took it herself. Yeah, but did they I'm make sure. it all the way? They the were balloon like, made Katie it? will get this. Katie will take it. Hey, oh Katie, you got it from here. Yeah, I'm she's going. Got it from Katie, here. You're scared. all set. Yeah. Peace out. The next night, my nurse was on again, and Kate's mom, still exhausted from the day before, now grieving, had come to the ward to pack up Kate's things from her room. My nurse, called Louise, by the way, was helping pack up her belongings to go home. I felt like I had to tell her about the balloon. Me and Kate's mom were close. When I told her, she was tearing up and smiled. That is just so, so funny. Is it though? <laughs> You're like, yeah? Is it? <laughs> Why? <laughs> she definitely was playing a trick on you and Louise, my nurse. I guess it was her way of saying hello. 
She always said to me she will say hi in a creative way to her friends and nurses. Oh, I love oh. that. I mean, I guess I that's love creative. That, that nice is creative. Nice way of saying, yeah. I love you. I'm yeah, still just here. like a little balloon bopping mm, by. Balloon like, it's bounce. not threatening. It's yeah. not like, threatening. Like, as spooky as it is, you're like, that's just a balloon. Right. You right. know, like. <laughs> we all laughed. Kate had been has been gone a long time since 2007, yet she always yet she's always in my thoughts. Cystic fibrosis isn't cured yet, and I hope one day it will be. Treatment has improved, yet we have a long way to go. I encourage everyone to donate to cystic fibrosis charities and research. Yes, yes. we'll link some in our show notes. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really sweet. I'm still in contact with Kate's family and my old nurse Louise. We never went down the diagnostic service building as. Y- you needed an electronic pass to uh, get to certain areas. But I was the balloon just went through that. the that door. That's why they didn't. Not follow. everybody could get into the Morgan but the balloon Hospital. Can. You had to have like a certain pass. How did the balloon you get past? Hey, you know, paranormal stuff. They always have a pass. They have all the electronic can go passes. Go they want. You know. <laughs> yeah. Love the podcast. Keep it weird, but not so weird that your friend passes away and haunts you with a balloon that had somehow <laughs> untied from her bed and goes down the hallway at 3 a.m. just to spook the bejesus out of you. And it's 3 a.m. too. It's the witching hour. It's always hour. 3 a.m. That's it's the witching always hour. 3 a.m. That's when all the weird shit happens. That's why I don't get out of my bed. Yeah. That's when my youngest used to see Skeleton. Skeleton was my Skeleton. buddy. Skeleton I used to show up Skeleton. at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she would just be like, Skeleton. Skeleton. <laughs> 3 a.m. Just hanging out, 3 a.m. Oh man! All right, damn Thanks, Gemma. Gemma in that was a, that oh, was like a sweet and you one. may use my name. Oh, oh thank you, Gemma. <laughs> so this won't be beep. <laughs> the whole episode will not be beeped out. <laughs> I love it. And you know what? That was like a sweet one. Was it though? Yeah, very it was. kind. It's like her friend coming. Her back. friend coming from the dead to and say just hello. Just being like a little silly goofy. Just yeah. being like, Ooh, uh-huh. this is dude. like okay. That's just a, a note to all my friends: if you die and you're a ghost, please don't. Leave Play me alone. Uh, you me mean nothing to me. The just, minute you stop breathing, you mean nothing to us anymore. No, not that go you away. Nothing. Follow you the light. Go. Me, you can send me. No, like, don't send anything. You know, I'll sweet little in messages the... in the form of like a nice book showing up at my door. Oh, there you go. Oh, you want that Amazon? Nice they, they have to go get like a, a subscription nice... <laughs> to continue to <laughs> yeah, show you love. Like, don't freak me out with a balloon. Just show up in don't her mirror at 3 a.m. That's the kindest way to do it as a ghost. Do you know when I was younger, I heard stories of Bloody Mary. I never actually saw any movies or anything. Bloody Mary used to scare the shit out of me. But I would go to the, if I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I would close my eyes as I washed my hands. Why don't we create create a morbid mirror that you can sell to people so they can put it in the guest bathrooms of their homes? Oh my God. With Bloody Mary? No, so only in the morning. Yeah, children, the children's faces just pop up. Oh my God. And the giggling noise. Just like the, hi. Hey. The little, Don't like, forget hey. to wash your hands. <laughs> oh, my God. That but would only be at 3 a.m. Like and 3 to 4 a.m. Only if it's dark. If they turn the light on, it doesn't work. But only in I the dark that, that happens. I love hard. That. Let's hard. make that product. TM that would be so good. TM. <laughs> yeah, that's a great product. <laughs> that's how you TM things, right? You just yeah, say yeah, TM. You just say it. That's, exact. that's how Ash and I TM things all I the time. I think that's how, that's We're how like, it works. brilliant idea. TM. No one can take that now. Yeah. We'll sue you. That's great. Yeah, that's he how was that works. In that podcast. I like yeah, this idea. I said TM. Right. So, right. That's a good idea. I think that's a great idea. But then you have First to clean up the bathroom after. Like Mike, that should be the true. thing. Can you do that for yeah. us? Make a, let's get that going, right. Mikey. Let's let's get that rolling. <laughs> yeah, the scare the shit out of you mirror. I think this one is going to be, let's see. Uh, I think this will be a good one. Okay. I'm not really sure. Well, they're all good um, ones. It's called A Haunted Hospital and an Uninvited Passenger. Passenger. Always wow. Haunted hospitals. Passenger. I'm a little scared by this one. Okay, I'm quickly scanning to see scared, if I can use the name. Oh, yeah, scared. we can use the name. We can use the name. Excellent. I love when people tell us that. Are you two ready? I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. This one's called A Haunted Hospital and an Uninvited Passenger. Mm. What's up, bitches? <laughs> I couldn't wait for and that. And I mean in the high five, fist bump, finger poke kind of way. Yeah. What's, what's a up? finger poke, you might say? When my nephews were wee ones, we taught them to high five and then fist bump. My youngest nephew then stuck his finger straight out like E.T. And we did the finger poke, his words. Okay, can you guys, let's see if you learned. Poke. There Ooh, you that go. That takes a lot of like. There you go. Focus. Yeah, it really focus. does. You have to like. There, Just there if you is. guys could like see it. what I'm seeing now. <laughs> we'll, put it, we'll put it online. Two grown <laughs> people trying to touch fingers. Just, it takes a lot of focus. It does. That was good. I feel purposeful right now. This has since become a thing with all our little ones in our lives. It's the cutest damn thing ever. Not here, it isn't. <laughs> this was adorable. This is so cute. Look. Oh, 
you can use my name, which is Casey, by the way. Hey, Casey. Hi, Casey. I'm a new listener and was introduced to your podcast in an interesting Ooh. manner. Ooh. Oh, good for you, Casey. This is not the podcast you were introduced to. I love it. We are at my uncle's burial <laughs> and my very large, very redneck family all met up at Amazing. the closest bar to celebrate with bar food and lots of drinks. I love that. That sounds great. That sounds like yeah. the way to do it. That's what you got to do. As we were sitting around tables shooting the shit, my aunt Susie asked me out of the blue, what is a, you like this, pedophile? Oh, a oh pedophile? Oh my gosh. Oh no. My sister, it's what you call... Oh, I think, come on! I, this oh, is putifa. your word. Okay, yeah. a putifa. There's no filing involved a putifa, here. Yeah, a putifa, my sister putifa. and I in uni unison say a peta what? <laughs> she laughs what and I says, I like, what? "Do you listen to podcasts? I've been listening to this one called Morbid, and they keep referring to something called a pedifa." Oh my god, pedifa! <laughs> so of course, my sister and I jump on Google to our t and to our dismay, find nothing except a reference to you know what I was thinking. Pedophiles. Yeah, yeah. My aunt Susie, who by the way is a badass bitch, hell yeah, with she the is biggest Susie. heart in the whole world, says that doesn't really seem right. You <laughs> need to listen to this podcast. About. Yeah, you love all that ghostly stuff, and I thought of you as soon as I heard it. I downloaded a couple of episodes and proceeded to laugh when I discovered a pedophile. Is your word for a PDF, PDF. file? <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with that. Is the way she got into it. I love it. Nothing that to do with scary stories. Aunt Susie. Yeah, just, Nothing hey. to do. Aunt Susie just, just Aunt Susie saying, "What the hell is a pedophile?" Love mm. it. I love it. Much love it. like us in the nursing world, who refer to an EKG as an ekaga. Ekaga. My aunt got a good giggle out of this as well. I also realized I just found my new obsession. Morbid. Your podcast. Hey. Hey, Casey. You You're my new obsession. bitches are the best. You are, Casey. I don't just call anyone bitches in a good way. So Ooh, you should take that. that as a compliment. I love I Casey that. reserves it in for just demeaning people. I also... I Bad parking if jobs. If I'm calling you like a, a bitch in a happy way, then like you That's really, like a you're good really thing. like... Yeah. Like you're a bad bitch. That's a term Mikey, of Mikey, you bastard. <laughs> you son like of a, a bitch. Good, like in a good way. I like that. <laughs> Let's I'm a very normalize cursing our friends so. out. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> you are very yeah. aggressive. The more aggressive my compliment to me the, to you, the more I love you. Your yeah. first email or text to me was signed off. I love your fucking guts. Yeah, I love your fucking guts. <laughs> That's how yeah. you signed off. Literally, I was like, wow. Terms the of amount endearment. of times that Terms I look at John and I'm like. I just want to punch you in the face. You're so cute. Like I, say I do that it to all the, the time. Kids. Like, oh, I just want to punch you. And he's like, that's not nice. Like, I don't. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like a lot of that. people do no, that. No, I get yeah. that. Well, I do Ooh, with I my just, kids. Like, I wanted oh, to punch them in the face constantly. I'm like, I want to launch you into the sun. You're just the cutest. Don't don't muffin. punch your children. In no, the don't face. do it. Just, just, just ever tell do them it. you want to. But one of them just. Oh, I want to pop you. Squeeze your fists. Yeah, I'm gonna pop them till their heads pop off. Oh, because you're so cute. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't do any of those no, things. Don't do that. Just You'll say be that. arrested it's science, immediately. Though. They figured out that's like normal. Is it? Yeah, it's like some evolutionary it's something that thing. the two of you do, it's not normal. <laughs> okay, back to our story, ladies. Now she is correct. I do love me some ghostly stuff. I was watching Poltergeist at home alone at a young age and have never stopped. Wow, that's impressive. You, that is not me. I'm obsessed with horror movies <laughs> and haunted houses. The Warrens are my heroes. Whoa. I can't get enough of their stories. Okay, please tell Sheena who the Warrens are. The Warrens are like famous, very famous and infamous ghost hunters. There you go. Yeah. I would never have Sheena should wife hang team. out with them. Like uh -oh. Amityville, The Conjuring, like they're all over you the place. You should go. You should look them up and say, hey, I would like to come hang out with you. Where do they live? Where are they? Isn't one of them dead? Oh, but that's... Are they both, both dead? No, they but that doesn't die. matter in this field yeah. of work. I, yeah, I mean, I they're, they're just, so they just committed them. to their jobs. Yeah, they truly they're are. Just Wherever doing they more live, now. I don't want to go there. Yeah, they're they're an interesting Oh, they're story, here right now. The two of them. The those, those <laughs> poster is shaking on the wall. You know, we have a lot to talk oh, about. Oh, there's a red know. balloon. Too. Yeah, there's, there's the horns. Hi, Kate. <laughs> My sister Jessica and I tend to frequent places that are known to be haunted. We have a few good stories, but nothing as good as the time I took a tour of the haunted St. Ignatius Hospital in our local town. How do these people that love horror always have something in their local town? I know, I'm I jealous. I noticed that. You're jealous. I don't have a lot in my local town. You're um, like 12 minutes from you Salem. Live right beside Salem. That's true. I have You that. like go there for fun. That's very true. And didn't you go on a boat like the scariest We did ship? in Quincy. E e with in Sam your, and Colby. In your yeah. state. Yeah. That, like, was, that was also 20 minutes away. Set. And I had a ghost blow in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I got assaulted by a ghost. And you have a scale. Assaulted? They yeah. were hitting on you. Yeah, it was like, they're sailors, so. 
That's, 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 that's the house. nicest thing they do. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, the good. hospital has been abandoned for years. And when some local ladies discovered how haunted it was, they decided to put on some tours. Of course, this Hell place yeah. is shut down because it's scary. Yeah. They can't service the needs of the ill here, but we can make people ill here. Absolutely. So let's bring them in. They can get service down the road at the new hospital. You turn that right around. <laughs> now growing up in this small town, I had also grown up with all of them. So the tour seemed more like a girl's night out with just a touch of... Let's see who can make it through this scary ass that shit. That sounds like on my the perfect side. idea. Of you guys should you should take her on this tour. Yes, she is should. nodding in a like one hundred percent agreement. To go. This is sarcasm for me. No, no, no way. they should take you. This yeah. could be our whole new YouTube series where we take you to haunted places. Oh my god, I want to do great. that. I'll just Let's I'll go. Lizzie pass, Borden. Pass, pass, this would be good. Pass, Lizzie Borden house. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Lizzie Borden house. What Even is Ash that house? Could barely handle you know? that. I don't oh go my to god! Any of don't these start. Hunt. So we don't need to make it a series, that. not a one and done. Yeah, that's true. Pat. If it's a start feature film, that. then we could do one and done. It, it, it's got vibes in that house, Ooh. and then they follow you. Yeah, those are, there's some. There are some vibes in that oh my house gosh. for sure. Wow. Pass hard, but I loved pass. it. I'll go back. Mm -mm. Okay, let's see how creepy this one is. Breakfast in the morning. This can be added to the list though, because at the beginning of each tour, you meet outside the massive building with a scale of ten on the creepy scale. That's just the building. Hospital, <sighs> abandoned for years, so there's no power or anything in the building. Oh, yes, I'm in. You are equipped with flashlights and the warmest clothes necessary for a fall night. So now they're ready to enter. The ladies also suggested we download a specific Ghost Hunter app on our phones. Because oh, now you can just get gosh. apps for this. Yeah. If you want to just put it out, the Apple's got this sorted. It tells you <laughs> yeah, which ghosts know. are where. Oh. Take a left here for children, you know, straight for murderers oh, like the, yeah, yeah it's like an app though. maps yeah the it's real a map. ones are awesome yeah yeah those, those are, are good fun. no but the real ones are too real the apps are better They're very real for, for 99 cents someone can build that for you <laughs> oh my God. you want a morbid Connect app the underworld you can make a morbid app for yeah. made up ghosts there you go i like that <laughs> here's <laughs> where <laughs> my <laughs> tm <laughs> We're going to make a fake app. Yeah. Here's where my skepticism kicked into overdrive. <clears throat> Seriously, a stupid iPhone app? And That's what I was just thank thinking. Thank you. That's what I, I was they, like, yeah, this doesn't... <laughs> they supposedly had previous luck with communicating through this app with ghostly <laughs> residents. It acts like one of those devices that make the white noise and let spirit talk through it. I think EVP is the correct name. I also <laughs> decided to start recording on my phone just to see if I picked up any voices or noises. I mean, why not, right? So we all laugh and skeptically download the app. As we begin the tour into the hospital, the app is squawking and randomly spouting out words like ring landscape, etc. We're all like, ooh, so there is a <laughs> ring buried outside in the landscaping, ha 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 about how absurd the app was. As we made our way through the hallways of peeling plaster and scattered debris, we come upon a specific patient's room by the name of Rose. At least I think that's what was her name. We will go with that for now. Let's go with Rose. Yeah, let's go with Rose. Rose was known to be a volatile patient who didn't want anyone bothering her in her room at any time. Uh-oh. As we all conjured around in the room hearing the stories of Rose, we were suddenly stalled as all of our phones with the Ghost Hunter app promptly shouted, Get out! Oh, oh no! At That's the same scary. time. It was Rose. Needless to say, we got out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you listen. Rose had spoken. When they tell you to leave, you leave. Rose you should means leave. Business. Yeah. We made our way through the rest of the hallways of the massive hospital, searching all the remains of the procedure room, the children's wing, and eventually the kitchen. This is where things got interesting for me. Ooh. The kitchen area was still stocked with all the dishes, cooking pots and pans, and the cash register. As I was standing next to the cash register, my app became very active, spouting out words like cash, money, etc. While I was concentrating on this particular revelation, I could hear others talking very excitedly in a cubby off the kitchen, which was known to be a very active area. I went to the area after they cleared out and just found shelves of dishes. Nothing too exciting. However, remember this particular spot for dun, reference. Dun, dun. I'm remembering. We left the kitchen area and made our way upstairs. Now keep in mind that since the building has been sold and was going to be renovated, we were told that if we wanted, we could take anything home from the hospital that we please. What? Like the dishes? Here's some dishes from this Rose's... Like it's like, do you want to take like a catheter? Like yes. what is Oh, this is Jeremy's catheter. You. Yeah. Still filled. <laughs> As we made our way up the stairs and through the rooms, we came upon a room with the number 309. It would appear 
someone had been squatting here for some time. Ooh. There was a mattress and sleeping bags and lots of empty food containers and bags. So this is an mm. abandoned building. Yeah, right. So maybe someone just wanted cover. We also found 80s porn magazines, which oh. are quite comical wow. in the amount of hair that was acceptable <laughs> in various <laughs> regions in that time. Ah, uh, yes. 80s uh, hairstyles. Yes. Love it. <laughs> My sick humor being what it is, I thought, I need this door number plaque, considering it was also the same number as my address. Oh. So I peeled it off the wall and placed it in my pocket. Yep. This is not the first time I have made this grave decision. <laughs> I, I also say, found a super old beer bottle that piqued my interest. Into my pocket it went. Oh, no. I also found several windows and doors I would have loved to confiscate, but didn't have my power tools with me. They did <laughs> say they take anything. They did pocket either. Yeah, you know. We then made our way down to the main level, but there was still one more level to descend. What's in the basement, Elena? The morgue. The morgue. Oh, no. My place. I stood, at the, I stood at the top of the stairs, looking down into the deepest, darkest darkness I had ever seen oh. or not seen. I made the immediate decision that there was no way I was going down there. Oh, go Period. Down. That's what End I of story. Said. Go down there. All I could envision was ghostly scream faces trapped at the bottom, screaming up at me. So basically, the tour had ended. So she didn't go. We stood outside and visited and visited and said our goodbyes. And I got in my pick for my 20 minute drive home on the dark country back roads to where we lived. I feel like those the, objects are going to be the a pickup. problem. Yeah, for she you. got in her pickup. <laughs> I was excited to <laughs> see know, if yeah. my phone had picked up anything while I was recording the whole two hours we were in the hospital. I mean, I could see the red line going up and down the whole tour. I was expecting to hear something. As I pulled up the app on my phone, I was stunned to find there was absolutely nothing recorded at all. Before I left the hospital, I had two hours worth of recording on. Now, outside the hospital, I had zero. Ooh. Oh. What the hell? It was what all gone. What the hell gone. indeed? So I threw some music on and drove, drove home, rethinking my visit to the hospital and imagining it was when it was still in working condition with the nurses in white uniforms and their caps in place, etc. Mm. I could see it all clearly in my mind before the plaster was peeling and the place wasn't riddled with trash and debris. Could have been a nice place. Yeah. Yeah. I got home and this is where things got interesting. Oh, At yeah, home you now. Have those things. Oh, Not in the she's... hospital. She's come home yeah, now. Yeah, she's brought taken those the things plaque with you. and she's taken, what else did she bring? A beer bottle. A beer bottle. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was standing in my kitchen when I got the feeling I should check the Ghost Hunter app just for shits and giggles. I opened the app and heard the white noise. I then asked, is anyone there? Oh. Immediately the Never app responds, that. yes. Never. Ooh. Never ask that. I then asked, who are you? The app responds, Dave. Oh, it's just Dave. Oh, it's Dave. Well, of course. <laughs> of course I it's then Dave. responded Dave. with, why are you here? The app responded with, pretty. Oh, hey, you Davey got a boy. Oh, no, a pervy oh, Dave. I pervy asked, Dave. you followed me home because you think I'm pretty? App said yes. Oh, Dave, boy. ever heard of consent? Okay. <laughs> no. Jeez. Dave dead. Dave dead. <laughs> Dave like <laughs> Casey. Now, as I stand in my kitchen in the late hours of the night, I'm thinking to myself, not only is there a presence named Dave here in my kitchen, but most disturbingly, he was in my passenger seat with me on the ride the whole way home. Oh my oh. gosh. That is so creepy. Well, well maybe he just floated. He I don't know. What, what, what is the speed limit for no, floating? No, he definitely sat in that passenger seat. He hitched the ride. Or maybe just on top of her. Maybe in her true. lap. Maybe he but was it just, would have been cold. That's true. You would have felt bad. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he sat in the back. There Who is knows? a significant temperature Every change. time I feel cold now, you guys, I'm mm -hmm. going to be freaked out. I'm telling you. You feel cold every night. <laughs> The, maybe our house is haunted <laughs> the quincy ship was freezing obviously because it's just st like sitting in the middle of the ocean like it's yeah. just but it would there was significant changes in temperature, in temperature when, when you things went to... would start going down wow like all of a sudden your breath would become visible and it, it was like a deep cold that you were like, like in oh your this bones. is different like oh how cold gosh. is it when a sailor licks your ear it, that was awful. Yeah, I thought it was cold. a bug in my ear. Oh. For a I thought it had like landed in my ear, but it was like this weird cold. Oh. It, was so oh. gross. it was Robert. That was gross. his name. We're sure. Bobby. You're sure? Yeah, we're sure. Oh. Bobby the ear blower. Yeah. What a bastard. God damn it, Robert. <laughs> Dave then told me other things about a man named Gary White. G 
scary That light. may also have been with him. It was a little confusing at this point because of the information he was spewing out. It was so sporadic. I love how she's like having it a little time to like Gary had shown up. Yeah. So like we had a party. I love that she's not even yeah. slightly freaked out. No. Yeah. So, I mean, she was kind. She told Dave that he should go back to the hospital where he belonged. Smart. And I'm sorry if I gave him the wrong impression that I wanted him to come home with me. Wow. She's very nice. I then yes. went to bed. However, for about three days after that, my cat would stand on the back of the couch, staring at the ceiling, chattering his teeth. Ooh. The cat was basically Garfield reincarnate. So his behavior was so out of his norm and a little unnerving. I mean, let's be real. His fat ass didn't move unless he needed to eat or shit. But he was obsessed. Oh my God. He was but watching he was the ceiling con constantly. About three days after the tour, I talked to one of my girlfriends, Robin, who helped out with the tours and told her my story. She gaped at me and then told me that the hot spot in the kitchen that had all the activity where the dishes were was a ghost named Dave. <gasps> oh. And there had been no activity in that area since the day Hold I had up. taken the tour. Because he went home with no, you. No, sir. Robin then told me that she had taken a couple of ghosts home with her as well. Taken. Uh, but they eventually go back to the hospital where they belong. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They'll go home. <laughs> no the big hospital deal. Yeah still remains in its decrepit state. Several people have tried to convert the building into apartment buildings and such, but have never succeeded. The show Ghost Hunters did an episode of a tour through the St. Ignatius Hospital in oh, Colfax. Shit. And I did hear the, that most of their recordings from that night were erased from their cameras when leaving the hospital. Oh, that's that weird. weird. On a side note, my dear friend Robin died last year of cancer. Aww. Yeah. Because she is the one, because she is one of the people who suggested the Ghost Hunter app to me, I occasionally try to reach her through it. So far, all I have gotten is that my drink is next to my remote, <laughs> which is always true, but can never get a name <laughs> of who I am communicating with. Maybe Dave is still making house calls. Who knows? Maybe one of these days I will get to talk to my dear friend again through her suggested oh, app. Oh, I hope you do. But I do hold solace that the last time I saw her, I told her I loved her and would see her soon. Mm -hmm. I know she is happy and no longer in pain in heaven with her daddy. Oh. So keep it weird, but not so weird that you bring home a ghost by the name of Dave from a haunted <laughs> hospital because he thinks you're hot and terrorizes your cat for three days while you try to get him to go back home. Definitely Casey. not that weird. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, that's a little too weird. Wow, hey, Casey. But on the bright side, she got to keep her... 50 year old beer bottle and her new oh, yeah, nameplate 309. Oh, I so thought that, that was going to be part of the like scary. Maybe part he of the attached story. to those things. That's Maybe how he was able he wanted to, to get. make sure that they had a good home. So Davy likes uh, hot kleptos. Yeah, you know, who doesn't? But yeah. she's not a klepto because she was allowed <laughs> she had permission. to take it. But she Dave didn't know that. She was definitely allowed Dave to. Dave doesn't know what they tell you outside the premises. I feel um. for him. Well, my next one is called Hospitals Are Haunted, Y'all. <laughs> That's it. We're and still it's, with the haunted hospital. Hospitals are haunted, y'all. And this is from Christina. And yes, you can use my name. Thank you, because I did. Thanks, Christina. Let me start by saying I am super excited that you wonderful ladies are reading my submission. You're I'm welcome. So excited. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I also want to thank you for being amazing and kind human beings. Oh, Aww. thank you. I absolutely love when you both stumble on words and don't cut it out. <laughs> we're, we're not good at this. So like we, we're fine with that. As a nurse educator, I do that too when I present. And it's nice to feel like I'm not the only one. That's, That's the whole world. Human. We're real people. Yeah. world. Yeah. Real people. Ever since I listened to the first listener tales, I was tempted to say, share some of my stories. I finally decided to write in today after I validated one of the stories with a nurse that I work with. And then later in the day, my mail in my, mail in my office mailbox just flew out onto the floor in front of my coworkers. No breeze and no one else's mail ever shifted. I've included two stories as there's a theme and they are somewhat short. Take what you like, leave what you don't. <laughs> like we'll that. take it. We'll take it all. The first one is called Wheelchair Basketball Ghost. <laughs> I don't know why I was, I was like, basketball. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> the first story originates in my first year of nursing. I worked second shift from 3 to 11 p.m. I Long often shift. got mandated to work a double shift, shift 16 hours. 
Ooh. Damn. That is a long... 3 p.m. to 7 a.m. I was young and energetic and loved the overtime pay. Mama needed some new of shoes. Course. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't phase me too much. One evening, I had a patient's family member getting ready to leave for the night, and she asked me not to let anything bad happen to her mother. Oh. Uh. I assured her that she had nothing to worry about and that I would be there all night with her. Yeah. Her mother was there because of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and was very stable. I really was not worried about this patient so much. I was worried about my psych patients across the hall that were seeing spiders everywhere. But I parked myself outside my COPD's patient door so that I could visualize her throughout the night. You're a good nurse. Very good. Yeah. She was and also, I'd be scared of the spider patients. I would also be scared of I that. I would stay away from the spider yeah, patients. Yeah, that would be a little terrifying. Yeah. She was receiving an overnight satogram, which basically measures her oxygen levels throughout the night. They say that after you've been a nurse for a while, you start to develop a sixth sense for your patients and can predict when something is just not right, even when they look clinically fine. I was by no means as experienced an experienced nurse, but I like to think that this is when my nursing sixth kicked sense started in. to kick in. I had this strange desire to make sure that I knew where the code code blue, a code a code called when a patient loses their pulse button, was in her room. Isn't that like terrifying? That's terrifying. That's really terrifying. That's <sighs> like when you see. Like it's like in the new schools now, you see like lockdown buttons on yeah. the walls, like those kind of things. While very necessary, and I'm so happy yes, they exist. Like they exist. they're you. comforting, but also terrifying Scary at the same shit. time. Yes, it's like so when you see a code blue, you're like, oh, you have to use that at some yeah. point, and that's scary. Yeah. Like I said, I was a new nurse and had never actually called a code blue until this night. Oh no. Later in the night, just after 2 a.m., my patient's oxygen saturation started rapidly decreasing. I ran into the room and flipped the light on. She was not breathing. I checked for a pulse, no pulse. Oh I immediately pushed the code blue button on the wall that I had so conveniently located earlier in the night and began CPR. It's we like were, she knew. She just knew. Like she, that was the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. We were able to get her pulse back and she was transferred to ICU. I felt horrible, like I had failed her daughter, but there were no clinical indicators leading up to this event. She was getting ready to be discharged home the next day. <gasps> I then learned what happens when you use a code cart, the, full, the, f the cart full of medications and supplies to run a code blue. My coworkers instructed me that I had to take the open cart down to the sub basement at the far end of the hospital and retrieve a new one. Oh, they no. thought that so I was like, good. oh, the hospital basement. I hate anything so where the I'm standing basement. down there, like, hello. Yeah. Like, and oh, where, hey. you, where you come in in the middle of the <laughs> night and go, are you down here by yourself? Yeah. And I go, yeah. no, I'm not. All of them are here. They're all here with me. <laughs> They thought that this would be a good learning experience for me and that I had to go alone so they could cover the rest of the floor. Because she didn't have a <laughs> difficult enough yeah, night already. Like, you should go alone. And she says, was this hazing? I don't know. You be the judge. Yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Our hospital was set up with a very long outer hallway that slightly curved and spanned the length of the hospital. And each unit had small hallways that branched off one side. My unit was on the far north end of the hospital, and the elevator to the sub-basement was at the far south end. As I pushed the code cart down the hallway, the units branched off to my right. I made it about one-third down the hallway when I saw a patient in a wheelchair, wheeling herself out of the unit hallway into the main hallway. I could not see her face, but she had long, black, scraggly hair. Oh, my of God. Course. No. Nobody I does their this. hair when and they're it's always long and black. <laughs> this is... Always. I'm starting a salon when <laughs> I die. Nodded. DM. Oh, DM. That draped somewhat over her face. You oh, wanna, my God. Do you want to scare gown. the shit out of living people? Do it looking That's, good. Yeah, Come, to <laughs> Come to Nodded. Come to Nodded. The only thing was, it was not a pattern I had ever seen on one of our hospital gowns. Ooh. It appeared as though she noticed me coming towards her, and she began to roll her wheelchair backwards and back into the unit she came from. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like it either. She did this so smoothly and quickly, like something you would see from a professional wheelchair basketball player. Yet she looked so did just she have a disheveled. Basketball? No, apparently not. No, it's just, it's just <laughs> this. This just, just the. This listener is familiar with the with wheeling, wheelchair basketball. Yeah, wheelchair. Wheeling and dealing Sports. in wheelchair basketball. She said Got she was it. so smooth, but she looked so dis disheveled and weak. I was still a ways from her, so I picked up my pace and turned the corner into the unit she had come from. She was not there. I looked down the hall in the unit, and she was nowhere to be found. Stop. 
There's a nurse's station right at the entrance of the hallway. So I asked the nurses sitting there if a patient had just come by in a wheelchair. Of course They not. looked at me like I was no, so strange for asking that kind of question at 3 a.m. and said, no, no one has been passed here. I proceeded back out into the main hallway thinking to, my, thinking to myself, cool, cool, cool. So that was a ghost. Yes. I cool. heard this awesome. I arrived at the elevator to the sub basement. How could they expect me to go down there after this? Couldn't I just leave this used cart in the hallway? That's what Do they I really done. need a fresh code cart on our unit? Can it wait till morning or at least not the witching hour of 3 a.m.? Oh, yes. Or couldn't I, you take a buddy like at 3 a.m.? Use the buddy system. Yeah, you got to use the buddy system. <laughs> no nurses came down You're alone a professional. to the morgue. They no. always had a buddy. Oh, they had a buddy? Always, every smart. time. These are smart nurses. Yeah. I sucked up my fear and retrieved a new cart. Wow, you're brave. The whole time questioning everything I had just experienced. I know I wasn't overtired and wasn't seeing things because I had just performed CPR and my body was pumping with endorphins. But you said it was a 16-hour shift. Yeah. So... So possibly, but the nah. CPR like pumped yeah, her up. Yeah. She's like, She's... let's go. I was wide awake. I never told anyone at work about that event because I was not trying to stand out as a weirdo. <laughs> Flash forward 10 years later and I have fully embraced my weirdness. Love it. So that was the first story. The second story is the boy in the striped shirt. Huh. That's ominous. Is <laughs> this it a little boy? Yeah. Oh. This story takes place years later in a hospital in Georgia. I was very experienced nurse and worked as a float nurse where I would work in a different unit each day to help the short staffing. I really enjoyed this position because I got to see all areas of the hospital and it also meant that I didn't always know the deep details of each unit, like the boy in the striped shirt. Yuck. On this particular day, <laughs> yuck, I was working on a cardiac unit and one of my patients was losing their, ba their battle with heart disease and had to get put into hospice, oh. end of life care. It was the last rounds of my shift and I went in his room to give him some medication for comfort. Before I gave his medication, he asked me, who is that little boy in the corner with the striped shirt? Did she say yuck? She said, yuck. She said, that's <laughs> your friend you? Billy. And just walked out. You're going to. This poor guy's like, okay. Oh. Just, just, just seeing things. It was just the patient and I in the room, but I was too frightened because it, at this, but I wasn't too frightened because at this point in my career, I had worked with many hospice patients and it is very common for them to see loved ones that had passed shortly before they pass. Welcome. Mm. That is true too. Yeah. That's it like a true. very so welcome. real thing. I have heard that too. Because they're like helping them transition. Yeah. Isn't that soothing? Actually, I love the idea. You of think that. of you're gonna die tomorrow. What does that mean? Uh, yeah. I'm not telling you nothing. Yeah, I'm not. You gonna got tell scared. You. If we'd like tell you to go visit some country you've never been to, you'd be scared. Imagine yeah. going to a whole other. No, realm. I know. I've heard that before, yeah. and I actually think it's really comforting yeah, that they, they come and like, like welcome you in. Yeah, just transition you in and be like, it's gonna. But be cool. see, they're like, the, it's not. They're not talking to the people that are still living their beautiful lives no. here on Earth. They're talking no. to the people that are going. Which I'm is okay sad. with that. I'm like, hmm. It's warm and welcoming. Oh, and this is, she says, I had experienced this with my own grandfather and would later experience it with my father. Mm. I asked the patient, patient, do you know him? And he said, no. That's when I became concerned. Mm -hmm. I asked, what is he doing? The it's patient like a TSA said, guy. You know, they want to make sure you come without any, you don't bring anything. Yeah, they just want to make sure. Pat they you scan down. you. Yeah. <laughs> are you really, are you who you say you are? So she said, what is he doing? And the patient said, you can see for yourself. Look at him. I turned to look and saw nothing in the room with us. The patient then said, he's just staring at us. Ooh, I wouldn't like that. Yuck. Internally, I thought, us? Don't bring me into this, <laughs> Leave mister. me out of this. You're the one seeing him, not me. But I smiled and nodded. Oh. <laughs> Finished administering the medication and made my way back out to the nurse's station. At the end of our shift, we would give the charge nurse updates on our patients. I gave my updates and laughingly told the charge nurse that my patient saw a boy in his room with a striped shirt. Oh, instantly her Billy's face back. just you know instantly her face turned from calm to frightened oh. as did everyone else's face at the nurse's station she proceeded to tell me that the unit has a resident ghost or what some would call a grim reaper yeah she time said is the, up exactly the boy in the striped shirt appears to people before they die that's a good thing I was like, Phew. all That's those people like, are dying and they're getting a welcome host. Boy, why are you giving boy, a boy a in a striped reaper? shirt? I know this, this he's boy like, in a striped shirt. Nice eye. light <laughs> blue it. stripes. He's yeah. like the he's their he's their transport. Yeah, their guy. Shuttle has arrived. He's just their guy. He's such a good guy. He's just our guy. 
I was yeah, fully creeped out and called his family to come visit him, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Yes. I didn't say why. I just said that he had been not asking for them. I handed off a report to the oncoming nurse and gave her the notice of the sighting of the boy in the striped shirt. She huffed and puffed and casually said, great, more paperwork for me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Because someone's going to go. <laughs> Great. He's you just going to kick it tonight. Oh, he's going to die. Like, I was hoping for next Tuesday. Out. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, she knew the legend and knew that he would be passing shortly. <laughs> Damn. Oh my All right. Cold. I hate to admit that there are nurses like this. Yes. But burnout is real, y'all. That is very yeah. true. I can't imagine being a nurse. It made me sad to hear that from her, but I was glad to know that his family would be there with him. I stopped back by the unit the next day to check on him. He had, in fact, passed away yep. overnight and was now in the morgue. Helena. Yeah. With, with me. <laughs> she gets so happy every time she's yeah. in the morgue. I just get so excited. I choke. His family got to be by his side and say their last goodbyes and help his spirit move on. While this situation fully creeped me out, I found myself being thankful for that warning from the boy in the striped shirt. She gets it. So, so that I could get his family to be there with him. Yeah, was absolutely. this boy a grim reaper or was he a ghost there to help the staff and those that are about to pass know that the time is soon? Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to my couple of stories. Keep it weird, but not so weird that take it away, Ash. She can't. Not so weird that you're not in the fucking room like Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Not so weird that you get scared about the little boy in the pajamas who comes to do a good deed because he likes to transport you and you give him a bad name calling him the Grim Reaper. I like that. There I like go. this boy. I'm Team Pajama Boy. I know. Team I Pajama like, Boy. I He's like always boy. coming. He's like, hey, look, guys, just a heads up. Yeah. I could get in a lot of trouble for doing this, but I want you to know... It's going to be good here, buddy. I'm going to take Maybe you. It's going to be job, good. Though. That's his job. He's Maybe an he's, angel. He's going over the Grim Reaper's head to be like, this really yeah, scary Grim Reaper, guy dude's is going to come tomorrow. in here later. But like, yeah. I'm here to chill you he out. Has like exactly. one, I'm here yeah. to give you a heads up. Yeah. You don't don't want worry just, about it. You don't want the Grim Reaper just yeah. walking in with He's no going to show up. He'll be fine. Don't. He's just big teddy bear. Yeah, like, he pretends he's scary. Him. but He loves that outfit. He'll come through. <laughs> And then I'll be right there. I'll pick you up tomorrow yeah. at four. There you go. Good pajama boy. Good pajama boy. Like ignore the scythe when he comes in. Yeah. It's, the kid's like, fine. what's that? It's like, oh, it's like he did a pair of scissors. It broke. Yeah. He carries just one scissor <laughs> like around. Giant, like a Why giant pair of scissors. Why are you guys making this creepy again? <laughs> but he just has one scissor. <laughs> he just like peacified the whole thing. Yeah. He'll have no flesh on his oh face. But like, yeah. you don't need to worry about that. You don't need that. flesh over here. It's okay. We don't... No you, skincare on yeah, this you side. You just relinquish your flesh when you come. Yeah. There's yeah. no such thing as Very skincare. Very smooth. No. <laughs> it's like Hellraiser, which will make Sheena watch it sometimes. No. What, what What song does this remind you of? <laughs> what song does... This... Anything? This Grim Reaper. Yeah, you have no nothing flesh. in your repertoire for, for Grim Reaper arrivals? No, huh. Not really. I'm okay. You're lacking... I am lacking. I'm trying to, yeah. Are you thinking of a jam? I'm trying to think of a jam. <laughs> I'm jamming to think of sing, a jam. Sing a song about the pajama boy. What would his theme song be when he came in? I am pajama man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, imagine yeah, let's write this song. I'm coming to save you. And this little guy just Not comes in and he goes, you, take you. I take you. am Pajama Man. Yeah, he yeah. just comes in. I'd be like, hell Elton yeah, John you starts are. playing on the piano. Oh, that would be great. Listen to me now. <laughs> You're just in your bed like, I'm ready. Let's Don't go. Don't be scared. Oh, that's Pajama Man. That's Pajama Man. That's it. And then he's like, now the Grim Reaper's coming by. Yeah. <laughs> Again with the Grim Reaper. No, but he's got to come. Yeah, how else are you going to go? He's he's with Pajama Man! He's got you know to wind your eyes down the river Wherever there. you are, Pajama Man, come get me. You know why just he has that? Sing the song. Just sing I don't the want song. a Grim Reaper, just Pajama to, Man. Because he has to disconnect your relationship to this world. So with he just goes... Yeah. And then your soul and your body split. And then he plops your TM, ass into I just a made boat. That up. And you go <laughs> floating down that river. Yeah, there's a boat. the afterlife. Yeah. 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 The there's pajama man, ride. they don't... I know he, there's a boat ride. There's a nice boat ride. I actually know an Indian spiritual about the boat ride. Ooh, really? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that. What? What do you That's know? That's the spiritual you made that up? I sang when, when, my grandpa, when my grandpa died. I love what that. What did you sing? Nadia Gehari Navapurani Oh my God, that is so spooky and pretty at the same time. I know. Oh, I love that. You that know, you like have like all chills. your Indian listeners are going to be like, what the hell what just the happened? What the heck They're gonna be like, happened? They just called I a traffic jam. I sang that song when my grandpa died. I love that. And it's that. all about like, the take journey. me to the other side of the shore. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. That was like so haunting. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Just gave us all the feels. That was crazy. We're all feeling all, all the feels your, all over All here. your Indian listeners are going to be like, 
whatever that is, make it stop. You're not supposed to sing that here. (laughs) They're all like, la, 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 la. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, we stopped. Okay. I promise. All right. Let's see. This next one is called, and I think this is the last one. It's called Hospital Spook Spook. What is the longest listener tale episode that's ever been published? This one, almost two hours long. I think we've made it to two hours. You have? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. You actually put it out as one? Maybe. You should warn people. Yeah. Listen, if you have to pick up your daughter in an hour, this is <laughs> not the day to listen to this one. This is a two, a two ride. This is a I'm flying from Boston to LA kind yeah. of an episode. Kind of an episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's why listener, te- 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 listener yes. tales can be so loosey-goosey. Oh, That's LTs, why it's as I like to call LTs. them. LTs. LTs can be so loosey-goosey. They can be a 40-minute it could, it could be, be a, a two hour. Minute. It could be two hours. We could be talking about spooky things. We could be talking about people Disney getting World. abducted, murders. Okay, there's pop there's quiz. Fun. There's quizzes yeah. too. At oh, the yeah. end of the listener too? No, right in the middle. This is one. <laughs> How do you show compassion in an Australian accent? Or oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers. Yeah. She's good at it. That's she a... remembered halfway through. Oh, or oh, no. no. <laughs> a good one or nor clear that's what because yes. ash always uses cleo as the that name yes that's the good name nor to put it. clear <laughs> you nor sound clear. perfectly australian yes absolutely everybody's like whoa did you just have an australian host come in here no it was me yeah. <laughs> it was it me. was elena twas me okay here we go let's go hey weirdos hey my name is becky and yes you can use my name becky thanks becky can, can i make a request that you all write you can use my name it's becky i love it the can other we way just reverse it, it? Like, oh, <laughs> hi this is becky it's a, it's a and you coaster. cannot use my name so please pick another <laughs> name you prefer that happens all the time <laughs> it does yeah and then you go back we'll and be like my up. name is matt and then you'll start saying it, and it's like don't use my name and i'm like oh <laughs> did that so i have to go back and peep it out (laughs) all right so becky says we can use her name hello rebecca there are probably fuckloads of beckys out there yeah yes correct can confirm there are there are lots of beckys that's how you make beckys but you're special becky you are yeah and we like you anyways on to the gushy stuff i love 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 the pair you i love you becky and stand in ash yeah (laughs) <laughs> yes, Becky, I love you. I started listening to you guys last year, and I can honestly say whatever it is you guys have, it, and I'm hooked. I love you, Becky. I could listen to you all day. I've listened to a few true crime podcasts before and haven't gotten into them. But the way you tell these stories and the passion that you put into them really comes through in the way that they are presented. Elena, I feel you when you talk about sleep paralysis. <laughs> I get it on near enough a nightly basis, oh. and I like the fact that I'm not the only one. No, you're not. I Sorry, can't imagine Becky. getting it on a near nightly basis. That's no, horrifying. That stinks. I'm pretty sure if I told my husband, he might divorce me. Ha ha. He already puts <laughs> up with the sleepwalking. Uncomfortable laugh. Ha ha. <laughs> Guess what I do when you're sleeping. <laughs> Um, He already puts up with the sleepwalking and talking and gets freaked out when I'm just staring at him in the middle of the night. I've done that to John before. Why? And if he looks at me, apparently I start laughing. Oh, even yeah. better. I don't know. In a laugh yet. you don't normally do. And he's staying with me. Yeah. yeah. He had kids with me. So like, he's really stuck. That, that's what she did on their first date. Yeah. Stared him down, laughed stared at him. Stared him down and laughed and at him. And he stood around. And he was like, he's I would like, like to He's like, oh, I love this. <laughs> I, I love like living on the edge. He right then and there. <laughs> that was it. He was like, this is it. <laughs> this is the one. Yep. Why would you not want the love of your life adoringly staring at you like she's possessed yeah. at 3 a.m.? Exactly. 3 a.m. Again, 3 a.m. the witching hour. All the weird things happen at 3 a.m. All of it. Right. A little bit about me. I'm from a small city in a rural part of England. I'm 37 year. I'm a 37 year old mother of three who decided at the age of... (laughs) Same. Same girl. Twinsies. Yeah, Becky. I decided at the age of 35 that I didn't know what to do with my life. Oh. Yeah. I... Hey, when did you switch? When did this start? Four years ago? Yeah. So you so were go. right we're around the there. Track, same, Becky. Yeah. Have you seen one of these? Yeah. Same. Same. Do that in school. Same. Um, so she didn't know what to do with her life. Then grow up, get married, have babies, all worked out. But nobody had told me about what happens between now and happily ever after. Ooh. So many well, women feel weird. that. This yeah. is your story This now. is my story. <laughs> You're like, oh, shit. Like, no one told me what happens yeah. after the kids are like big. And then you have yeah, to find you something do? to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. You don't think about it. Yeah. 
Because your whole life is like them. Yeah, for that short yeah. time, you're and like, then when babies, they become babies, more self sufficient, so this it's was like, the opposite. She thought they required no time. It just like what? I thought I was gonna pop them up and be done. Yeah, that's it. And like three months later, I'd be back at work. Yeah. And did that, no. how'd that work out? Ten years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel that. Took a minute. <laughs> Worked well. Um, so I decided to go to university. Oh, good for you. Get it, girl. And do a nursing degree. Hell yeah. Her children were the ages seven, six, and two. Damn, well, it sounds like you're the perfect a time to go back to school. <laughs> Another awkward laugh. Holy <laughs> shit! Mine are seven and two sevens and a three and holy, holy shit! Cow. I can't Mine imagine are 12 that. Twelve and nine, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, maybe. Just finally, like, wow. <laughs> I've worked That's at the close. hospital for 12 I had I've worked at the hospital for 12 years prior to starting my degree so I've seen a few spooky things from time to time and heard many a story. This story, however, happened recently on a placement I had in another smaller more rural hospital. It's always in the rural hospitals. Rural, rural, rural juror. That's my rural. 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 <laughs> rural. rural. <laughs> Starting the night shift, obviously, everything was running smoothly until the ceiling fell through in one of the bays that some patients were in. Oh, oh that's nice. A, that's a disruption. Uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if a ceiling's going to fall on you, better happen in the hospital everything is what I always right say. Until the ceiling caved in. <laughs> I know, but it, what, what a nice place to be. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. You want to be there. You know, the casual stuff that happens in hospitals. Yeah. We were rushing around to get the patients out and settled into a new area and phoning around to get someone from the maintenance team out to access the damage and condemn the bay until it could be fixed in the morning. Eventually, lights were turned off and the patients were settled in for a good night's sleep after the event that had just happened. We had tidied the bay and left it still with the equipment, patient lockers and tables inside and shut the doors. A few hours later, Jill, a member of the staff, went into the empty bay to grab a piece of equipment that was left in there. Jill came out a bit confused, and I asked her if she was okay. And she replied, when we left, all the lockers were next to each other, each bed space, wasn't they? I said, yes, they were. I put them there myself. She said, well, they are all in the middle of the room, and the windows are open. Ooh. Why do the windows keep opening? Is that an easy trick for the... Maybe. For the afterlife. It seems yeah. like I can't open windows easily. Yeah. It seems like a difficult task. It does. Close the windows. <laughs> Close the windows. <laughs> Only the real will get that Fresh reference. People. <laughs> it all works out. <laughs> it all connects. Um, okay, where was I? She sa I said, yes, I put them all there myself. She said, well, they're in the middle of the room and the windows are all open. I went with another member of the staff, Sarah, to have a look. When we got there, all the lockers were in the bed spaces like they were when I left them, and all the windows were closed. Oh, yes, they closed the windows. Me and Sarah windows. came to an agreement <laughs> that like, Jill uh... must have been seeing things and thought nothing of it. Seeing a lot of things. Yes. Yeah. A little while later, there was a cold breeze, and it was coming from the empty bay. I asked Sarah to come with me to inspect it, as Jill said she was not going into that room. Oh, don't blame Jill. Knows I do not what's blame up. Jill. I don't blame Jill on that one. We slowly walked towards the room. We stood there in shock. All the, the windows, windows were, open. were open. The emergency exit door was wide open, and all that's the, the curtains... first trick they teach you in dead school. Oh yeah, burst open. Had to open all the windows in cabinets. Yeah, back to Jill and her windows. <laughs> back to Jill. No, Jill didn't want to have anything Jill to do. Oh, yeah, Jill's windows. like I'm out. This is Sarah, and um, what was her name? Can't remember her name. Becky. 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 Yeah, yeah. Becky. Becky. Girl all Becky. right. So. I asked Sarah to come with me to inspect because Jill said she wasn't going into the room. We slowly walked towards the room. We stood there in shock. All the windows were open. The emergency exit door was wide open and all the curtains around the bay were pulled around. We heard laughter. Oh. <laughs> Children's laughter. Oh, no. We stood in silence for a few very long minutes and looked at each other in fright. I bravely walked in and shut the door and the windows. As I was doing this, I thought to myself, well, if someone's in here and going to attack me, then bring it on, bitches. Wow. Becky. Becky's crazy. She also went back to school when she had three kids at home. She yeah. Did. She's really, she uh, did. she's, she's looking for a fight. She has the good hair too, I bet. <laughs> when, for sure. When they were all shut and it was obvious no one was in the room, Sarah followed in and helped me to open all the curtains. We shut the door and headed to the nurse's station to tell all the rest of the staff what had just happened. With that... There was a loud bang, and the other nurses were straight on their feet to check on the patients to make sure they were all okay. 
Sarah, Jill, and I, however, looked at each other. The three of us slowly walked to the empty bay and peered in the door. All the windows were open. What the fuck? These kids are like, hey. <clears throat> like, it's stuffy We're having here, a party. Okay? We made sure no humans come here. We yeah. broke the ceiling. Get we out. broke the ceiling. To get <laughs> yeah, guys get out. space. Now go like, away. Damn. All the lockers were moved to the middle of the bay, and in one of the curtains, there was something. It looked like someone had got the end of the curtain and twisted themselves up in it. Oh, oh, nice. So it's like a form of shape. somebody. Oh, yeah. I don't like that. Curtain shape. No. Not into that. Jill's response was, oh, good Lord, who is that? <laughs> then we heard it again, the children's laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> that Actual sounds- footage from Billy, that. <laughs> Billy climbing curtains again. <laughs> Sarah, out of nowhere, ran into the room with a, ah! And full on ran and karate kicked the curtain. Oh, oh nice. God. Go, Sarah. What if it's like an actual it's nothing. sick child she just fell that right through. in there? <laughs> she just karate she chops went, him. Sarah just flew out the window. <laughs> the curtain instantly dropped and the laughter stopped. Oh, they didn't like the fight. That's like paranormal activity, uh, whatever one it is. The where it's like, there's like a sheet ghost. Yeah. And then when she goes to touch it, the, the whole thing falls, falls and there's nothing under there. Ugh. That scares the shit out of me. That but one. why? Only that? That will scare the that shit out of me. will scare that, the shit yeah, out of me. Yeah, that scares her. I don't need to I mean, see that's a sheet too much. ghost Magic and then not sheets. a sheet ghost. You know, magicians can also do that. <laughs> scares the shit out of me. That's like, <laughs> they also that's, scare her. That's true horror to me as a magician. <laughs> <laughs> With a red nose. <laughs> With a red ah! I don't like that. I don't like it. I looked at Sarah and said, where the hell did that come from? Sarah said she didn't know what came over her. It was the first thing that came into her head. <laughs> Karate chop. Really? A million things went through my head and not one was that. <laughs> we moved everything back into place, closed all Why? the windows. And Why? Left. Why are they doing this? And then. <laughs> A and little then, later on, me and bang. Sarah together went to get some food from the vending machines. Walking past reception, we said hello to the receptionist who slowly looked up at us. She looked very relieved and said, how has your night been, girls? Mine has been terrible. I'm too scared to look up from my desk. I keep hearing children laughing, and I'm so frightened. I keep trying to figure out where it's coming from, but there is nowhere in the hospital. But there is nowhere the hospital is all closed now, and we don't have a children's ward. Where can it be coming from? Oh. We stood and spoke to her a while, telling her about our night. When the night shift housekeep came, she looked like she had just literally seen a ghost. Oh, or, or a did. few. Or a few. <laughs> the out-of-hours department was now closed. And she was cleaning the individual rooms and locking them as she finished. And this they were one room unlocking. Mm-hmm. This one room had a heavy chair in the corner of the room. One a bit like a dentist chair is how she's described it. She left, locked the door, and carried on when she had got to another room. She realized she had left her antibacterial spray in the last room and went back to retrieve it. When she opened the door, the heavy chair in the corner of the room was now smack bang in the center of the room. Ooh, I don't like that. Mm-mm. Why do they move everything when no one's looking? Because they think it's like a like, level skill. Like you yeah. can't move when people are looking. You should yeah. do it when they're looking. They're embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> what Cause weakness? Because <laughs> like in case it's heavy, yeah. you don't want to struggle. Like I can barely move this they're chair. Embarrassed. They're like, ghost. I'm a ghost. I'm yeah, supposed to be intimidating. Be. I can't be struggling. Yeah, to push it won't be this. scary. If you yeah. can't even move that chair, you useless like, bugger. Come back next year. It's a good like bamboo effect when it's just there. In yeah, the middle of the chair. Like all so the like, windows are open. Like, ghosts are all about the pizzazz. Yeah, yeah but like the, a, the truly scary thing would be to watch it move. Yeah, but they can't oh, yeah, move it. They call seven me. of them. Needs. Hey, come on, Joe, yeah. come on. This is really heavy. <laughs> they have to call their friends. Yeah, and they it's all too have much. To, yeah, it's a big. It's a big to do. It's a production. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so she ran out and she heard children's laughter, and that's when we saw her. What's coming so funny, up the kids? I know. That's what I want to know. The faces of the humans. It's this face. <laughs> I would be like, are you guys watching Bluey? Because if you are, can I also watch Bluey? Yeah, I like, don't... oh, look, that three-year-old moved a chair and they're all scared. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's really why they're laughing. Yeah, they're laughing because they're, they're scared at the shit out of the kids, at, at, out of the adults. Other people. The adults. Throughout the remainder of the night, we had to go into the bay to close the windows a few more times and still heard the children's laughter. <laughs> I can honestly say I've never had an experience like this before. Like I said before, I've heard it a few stories. I've heard a few stories and have had a few moments, but nothing like this. For the remainder of my time, nothing else happened. I honestly don't think I would have been that scared if it wasn't for the laughing children. Oof. 
Keep it weird, but not so weird that you don't believe that one of your colleagues is seeing, but then see it all for yourself. Then go and karate kick a curtain that probably landed <laughs> on a ghost child's head. Yeah. Then you tell your story and find out they also have been terrorizing the rest of the building. Bye. They were busy. Damn. They were, were really not busy only doing ghosts. that one room. They were running yeah. around circuits. I love that ghost kids just like they're are just like, running, like normal kids. They're like, like we're that's where around. we're going. Yeah, you the, know one the thing sick. that's <laughs> really nice about it is that they're all happy. They are Seemingly. all happy. Like they're Having not really sad. Time. Yeah, they're not dead. walking around crying. That would be no. oh, oh, I didn't even think about that. That I know what's worse. Imagine than a giggling just kid. here. Yeah, just kids a crying. Ghost ghost kid is way better than a sob. If what I saw a sobbing ghost kid, just said, "Help me." No, that would be the end of me. I'd be like, you know what? And then they. They started poking you in the back. And then when you went no. to take your jacket, they were, your jacket was already being worn by a form. Oh, my God. Saying, no. help me. I all yeah, that. That, I don't like help that. Enough. I would like that Because nothing's worse than a crying child. Like, it'll just destroy my soul. Yeah. Like, I'll just want to help it. But That's I'll also the soundtrack just cry. on the boat. Yeah. Blah. To hell. Yeah. Just crying, <laughs> crying children. Crying children. children. My God. But tortured crying. Yeah. That makes sense. Crying dead children. Oh. Yeah. That's so much it's worse. The worst. Okay. Okay. I at yeah. least I feel okay about. I want to start a children. podcast <laughs> where we make noises. Just can you sing that? You want to start? Where a we make yeah, noises? yeah. Like, can you can you make that sound? <laughs> no, no. Of a crying dead child. Ooh. What does that sound like? Oh, I hate yeah, it. Oh yeah, this is good. We'll just do sound effects. <laughs> I hate it. Can you want to leave really on this come note? Here crying no, child. I don't. Cool. You're such a sicko. <laughs> I'm a sicko. I'm sorry I brought her. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> How dare you? I know. This is really mean. I well, mean, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. This, this is, a is fun really spot. fun. You're welcome anytime. We have literally been talking to you for two hours. Hell yeah. We're going to break this up into 17 episodes? Yeah, it's just going to be oh, a little, nice. little, snippets. little snippets. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Ash, we missed you. We do miss you, Ash. Do you know... Um, She'll be back, though. There's... Oh, I thought this was a permanent position for me. No, I'm sorry. Oh. This is a <laughs> very coveted seat you're in. I am. I'm sitting in Ash's chair. You may have not known this. I, I'm actually feeling her. Yeah. This little Perfect. show has a few listeners. Just a couple. Just a couple. So Your about a million people will Ash's listen to you sits. now. Just What's a couple of million people will hear you. Just a couple million. And your fears. <laughs> And my irrational and fears. fears of spiders and all things ghost related. And the sounds yes. of crying dead children. Yet you're still Please here. Please don't haunt me. <laughs> you are still here. I am. It's I true. made it. I've been a pretty good sport. You have. You've been you a great made sport. It. I've made it through now two episodes yeah. of Listener Tales. We'll ratchet it up a notch the next time. Okay. We'll do and like I went a, to a haunted house with scary. you. Something like, a, you know, like I escaped a murder or something. <sighs> Oh That's boy. when we whoop, take it up. Let's right. do that. Or, or home invasion. I can do this. Oh, home invasion. Home invasions are Even really... better. Then I'm going to have to buy it. As long as it's not my home. Can you yeah, just no. do it on an and episode where you have and like... And I'll uh, like, leave there all the ghosts yeah. here Set before all the alarms. I leave. Yes. If we're going to do home invasion, can we do it when you have a like a security company sponsor that episode yeah. because i'm gonna need that entire kit when we leave <laughs> when to you do leave, the whole house <laughs> code morbid <laughs> yeah, exactly i have to go buy all these things simply safe simply safe that's Perfect. my home security I want the whole system kit. this I want isn't the whole even an kit. ad <laughs> simply safe send me a kit there you go I need send to secure my home we You're do need to secure safe. our home before we do any scarier things we need to secure you need to arm yourselves from the ghosts yeah from the ghosts. ghosts. The, I'm not scared, I'm of, scared people. of the I'm people. I'm scared of the ghosts. See, Why? I'm, I'm way more scared of people. As you should be. Yeah. What has a ghost ever done to you in your life to harm you? What have they done for you lately? I don't know. <laughs> I try and stay away from them. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you guys are welcome back anytime. Thank you, Thank you. for Ash having will be us. Back. So you Ash, get her craziness. Hey, next, next time, you need a minute. And we'll it'll do just this be you with guys Ash. And Ash. Oh, there you yeah. go. We'll switch it up. Next time you want to go to Disney World. Oh, sweet. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Elena take my... is taking March in Disney. Yeah. Because she's doing an internship. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Disney has said, we're going to fix you. We're going to fix you. We're going to make you wear yeah. only pastel colors and, and enjoy Bibby, Bobby, it. Bobby, boo her. It's going gonna... to be in like Adam's family values when they like stick wednesday in that cabin and it's oh, like yeah. what just yeah. happened and it's like yes <laughs> and she comes it's out shock and therapy <laughs> i love it but her eyes That's never smile it. no it's just the teeth <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna how, how, do, how do you end this thing so we always end it with we hope you keep listening and we hope you keep being 
it. No, it. Keep Come it. on, I made you listen in the car <laughs> for two hours for to get weird. this right you at the end. Keep being weird too. You got it right. She got it right in the <laughs> car. Really we even practiced. Right. Okay, Wait. do it again. We'll do the clap. Okay, board. let let. Okay, <laughs> uh, you clack. let's go this way so you can like do you the do last the, word on your end. Okay. okay. Ready? Keep it. We eat eat eared. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep being weird. Who says it? Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Morbid early and ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today, or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus and Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.